Happy Facebook Live time and happy Thursday, almost the weekend. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm Melissa Kerman with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Um, and every week I'm here, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with a project, all the latest news and updates, um, both from Stampin' Up! and from my treehouse business. So uh, if you're joining me on the live or on the replay, thank you. Thank you for being here, for um, tuning in. I've got a very fun, exciting project to share with you today, or at least I'm excited about it. I hope you guys will be too. Um, <clears throat> So uh, in my little description, uh, what I mentioned is I had like an aha, like a little creative bliss moment earlier this week. <laughs> so that's the big exciting thing I want to share with you today, the project I've got to share. So uh, hopefully you're going to love it as much as I do. And uh, I often talk about uh, creative bliss because uh, it's not an everyday thing otherwise it wouldn't be bliss right <laughs> has to be something special and unique that happens every once in a while but uh, for me it's that amazing um, excitement that I get when I've created something that just you know like I just love it <laughs> I want to hug it and kiss it and eat it up. <laughs> I know that's dramatic, but um, if you, uh, uh, anyway, I've talked about this before. I just, um, I, it's something that I really love and, and can't get enough of. So it makes me that much more excited to share it with you guys. So anyway, just like a little bit in the way of announcements, and then I'm going to launch right into the project. So not a lot of big news going on right now because I think people are all waiting for uh, the new batch of freebies, the celebration items coming out on March 3rd. Um, so it's been a little bit quiet. Um, but the uh, coordination products are still on sale. Of course, they are limited time offer items. One of the things I'm going to show you today that I'm using for my Creative Bliss project <laughs> is one of those limited time offer pr uh, products. I'll show that to you in a bit. Um, but the other little bit of news is that uh, one of the celebration celebration items is sold out, and that is the kerchief card kit. Um, so those are all gone. And then... Um, uh, let's see, last week I announced that the uh, twine and sequins are also gone. So that's just to say the celebration items don't necessarily last and carry on forever. Uh, when they run out, they run out. So if there's something that you love, definitely get it sooner rather than later. So that's like the only announcement today. Yay! <laughs> um, I should tell you, for those of you out there that take my technique classes, my painted poppies class, I'm furiously working on all of that content. Um, the technique class happened last Friday and it was just a great a hoot um, to share that live with people. And uh, since then I've been you know, working on the, um, the video for it and the PDFs. Uh, it's a lot of work. I pour my heart and soul into it and many hours of work. Uh, but that's coming. Those of you out there waiting for it, <laughs> I'm not going to give you a date, but it's, you know, like soon, really soon, I promise. Um, I can't always tell how long it's going to take me to, uh, to create those videos because uh, they are very time consuming. So anyway, it's in process. And then I also am teaching Painted Poppies the live class tomorrow. So uh, super fun and exciting, very different kinds of projects, generally clean and simple, but really pretty. So that's going to be fun tomorrow as well. So that's going, what's going on in the world of, of Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Um, and incidentally, if you want to find me uh, on my website, uh, Melissa's Crafting Treehouse, www. You know, Melissa's Crafting Treehouse, <laughs> you'll be able to find me. And of course, on Facebook here and uh, on YouTube as well and Instagram. So, um, okay, so on to the project. So, are you guys all wondering what my favorite, my all-time favorite set is in the in the mini catalog? I saw somebody earlier guessed. <laughs> Only one person was brave enough to guess. Well, I've shared it before, so here it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. This is what we're using today. Positive thoughts. And I know you can't read the words, but because um, it's backwards. But the, I, I love the sentiments. Hugs, prayers, and love. And then sending po positive thoughts and feel-good wishes. I love that. And um, friends like you mean more every year. And then, of course, the, the images are just beautiful. I absolutely adore that fern. That is what I'm going to be using today. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I did use it last week, actually, um, but on a very, very different project from what you're going to see today. So, um, and then the other featured product, this is the item that's available on a limited time basis uh, and while supplies last, is the Coordinating Nature's Thoughts Dyes. 
So did anybody, anybody gets that? <laughs> oh, Barbara, it's your favorite too, yay. <laughs> yes, and I haven't seen a lot out there and I have to tell you, it's just crazy because I learned just recently that Stampin' Up! said these need a little love. In other words, they're not selling. Like what, people, really? <laughs> I am just like shocked. So I am doing my part to show the love to these products. So um, now I don't know how that relates to the stamp set, but certainly the dies and I imagine it's related. Um, so let me just show you this because I decided I would do what Stampin' Up! does and make a beautiful display of all those shapes that are in this set. And we're gonna be using several of them in the card today. So this, I don't know if you can tell, has like a lovely little stitched edge. It's different from the regular stitch. Uh, I'll put it up real close, maybe you guys can see. It's hard to tell what you can see in the camera. But anyway, um, just super, super pretty elements. So we're gonna use a bunch of those. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna turn the camera down and show you what I got. Alrighty. Let's see, no, we're still looking at the ceiling. That's not so good. <laughs> you wanna see my, my workspace, I think. Okay, make sure we don't got any glare in here. And I haven't said a hi to anybody, but hi Debbie, hi Christy. I saw other names flash by, but I've been too busy talking. I will um, say hello after the live um, uh, when I can pay more attention, the appropriate and due attention. All right, so we're using the Positive Thoughts set. We'll set that aside so I have room and space on my workspace. And I'm gonna start with, um, let's see. Let's bring in a messy thing. So now um, I'm going to show you some alternatives. Now you guys, some of you might recognize my little, my little very skewed tray. This is a pasta tray. <laughs> I know, kind of crazy. Um, but I use it when I'm doing my pigment sprinkles. So that's the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm using my pigment sprinkles. And where's my project stuff? Okay, so we're going to start with a piece of... Um, uh, watercolor paper and my fern image that I adore and my spray bottle and I like to put my little pigment sprinkles sprinkles into this little container makes it handy for me so you get six colors they are Stampin' Up! colors the two that I'm using today are um, the Granny Apple Green and the Bermuda Bay. And I've done other things with them. I did a recent project with masks. Um, uh, and I am, I'm particularly partial to the pigment sprinkles. I don't, it doesn't seem to me like they're super popular, which is kind of shocking to me. But I'm gonna show you something today. Maybe it will just change everything. You guys will just absolutely love it from here on out. Um, chime in if you have an opinion about the pigment sprinkles. Have you used them? My, inc my thinking is that they're just kind of intimidating to people. I don't know. Maybe because you can't control them and people want to be in control. I don't know. I like to be in control in general. But I also like organic sorts of looks. So anyway, here's what we're going to start with. I'm going to spray my stamp with some water. And then I'm going to take some of my Granny Apple Green. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this done. Chime in if you have. And I'm going to actually sprinkle right onto my stamp. I just did a little bit. And then I'm going to take my Aqua Painter and spread that ink out. So I'm kind of covering the whole surface with my Granny Apple Green pigment sprinkles. I, I'm like just crossing my fingers that you all just go, oh my god, this is the most amazing thing ever in the entire world. <laughs> But then maybe I want you to do that all the time. I don't know. Anyway, now I'm doing my Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to put some of those sprinkles on here too. Now you won't want to do this method with, um, uh, what am I saying, with uh, photopolymer stamps because it will stain them permanently. But it works just fine with the red rubber. So just uh, something to bear in mind. So now I'm going to use a little bit more of the Granny Apple Green. I want to make sure that that's, that comes through nice and strong. I haven't noticed. Has anybody said, have you ever, has anybody ever done this before? Chime in if you have or if you haven't or if you're intrigued by it. Uh, just comment of some sort. I'll try to pay attention to the comments. Okay, I see. Oh, Linda, you've never seen this done. Okay, good. <laughs> I love showing new things. Okay, so water, a little bit more water. I want to make sure that, that the sprinkles all have something to absorb into. Okay, now 
here goes my next thing. Now, what I'm doing here is actually not my very favorite thing. So I'm working on a piece for my first card. I really like this card, but it's not like, to me, a creative bliss card. But that will come. <laughs> and it's all related to this. So um, here we go. So I'm going to start stamping with... I'm waiting for the oohs and ahs. Oh, my gosh. Now, that's a, a bliss. <laughs> I love the way that looks. And then I'm going to keep stamping. Now it's getting a little dry, so I'm going to spray my stamp a little bit more. And I'm going to come in at another different kind of angle just to keep it interesting. Ah, bang! Ah, hate when that happens. Okay, well, that's okay. Uh, spray it again. <laughs> I got a lot of ink on there, so look at me. Expect to get messy when you do this. Maybe that's why other people don't like it. I don't know. Okay, so... <laughs> Cracking myself up here. All right, stamping it again. Fortunately, I'm doing a nice um, organic background here, so dropping it, you know, no big deal. I'm going to put a little bit more of my granny apple green on there. All righty. Is it wet? I need to spray a little more. So I can see when I, after I put the sprinkles on, if it's dry, I don't really want it to be dry. So here we go. Making a mess, huh? But it's a fun mess. This is going to be my background for one of my cards. And obviously I'm going to have to set it aside to dry. But check that out. I think it's really cool. Oh, I see an oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Two oh my goshes. Yay, Christy. Yay, Barbara. <laughs> So there is one of the pieces I'm going to use on my first card. Okay, so I am going to just sort of set that aside. I don't want to get it on stuff because it's still really wet. Okay, and we're going to do this a little bit more. Are you guys ready for more? Okay, so spray. And I'm going to put some of my granny apple green on there. Now, the way that these two colors, this is Bermuda Bay, like I said, and granny apple green mix is just kind of remarkable because it makes what looks to me like shaded spruce. Oh my gosh, look at those hands, crazy. Well, that's what it's all about, getting inky, right? So now I'm gonna put a little bit more of my Bermuda Bay on. No, that's granny apple green, don't get them mixed up. It's funny though, because look, look. That's granny apple green. It looks orange, is that crazy or what? <laughs> so silly. Now, the Bermuda Bay looks sort of purple, which is also really strange. But when they, you know, they just, it's like magic, this stuff. It's not like regular ink. It's really unusual. That's why I love it. Okay, a little bit of a spray. Okay, now I'm going to work on some pieces for my second card. So I'm going to pull in some scrap paper here. This is actually watercolor paper. So is the first piece, if you didn't figure that part out yet. And I'm just going to start stamping some pieces. They each come out a little bit different. You might look at one or the next one and go, eh, I don't know if I like that one so much, but then you do some more. Putting some more granny apple green on there because it's getting a little dark. I spray with my water again. Bring in another piece of watercolor paper. So you can kind of just keep going and going and going with this. Ooh, that's a pretty one. I like that one. Okay, and then another one. And usually what I do when I'm doing this, I like that one too, kind of drier, and is uh, I'll wait until the pieces are dry, and then I do the back sides. And then I kind of go through them, and then I have to pick which ones are my favorites, which is sometimes hard. But usually I have one that I like better than the other, or it's just, uh, let's see if that's going to fit on there. Now check the back of the stamp out. Isn't that pretty colorful? <laughs> I love that. Okay, so again, I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to have all these lovely little pieces of fern to play with on cards. Moving forward, okay, one more piece. One more piece. 
let's keep this one light. I'm just going to spray it with water and not do any more sprinkles. I like that one. Okay, so you guys know I'm going to have to let these set these aside to dry. Okay, so then my question to you is, is this a creative bliss piece? Do you love it like me? <laughs> I think it's awesome. Okay, so a little biased. So I just want to point out, right, the difference in each of these is just amazing. So check this one out. This is, um, this, the Bermuda Bay has, can be so deep and dark. It almost has a red to it, which is just so strange. Look at the difference. Like I use the same exact crystal colors and they come up with just something so different. So part of why I like to do a bunch of these is if I'm combining it with a background, uh, my background might turn out dark or it might turn out light and I want to have um, pieces of the fern that really go uh, together. Yay, it's a creative bliss piece. Bliss piece. <laughs> Yay, thank you, Barbara. I'm so happy. Um, oh, oh, so, and you're going to go do it after, after the Facebook Live. Yay. I love hearing that. Okay, so I'm going to set these guys aside. I think it's just phenomenal. And, of course, I'm only using two of the colors in the whole set. Okay, so now we're going to do something else with watercolor paper. And you saw me do something similar to this, but... Okay, let's get this stamp. I'm going to have to clean this baby because I'm going to be using it for something else in a minute. Let's see. I have to remember all the things I wanted to show you. Okay, I'm going to wash this because I know it needs to be cleaned. Okay. Paper towel. Okay, so I'm actually going to um, work with this a little bit more. So you can see it gets really inky and dirty, but... That's part of the fun, right? So say, you know, this wasn't a creative bliss thing for you, or you just go, this is too much for me. I'm like freaked out, right? You never know. People are different. Um, my creative bliss thing might be, you know, your nightmare thing. <laughs> so I'm going to give you another choice, which I think is kind of fun and interesting as well. So if the pigment sprinkles are not your thing, there's some other ways that you can get uh, multiple colors of ink into your um, onto your stamp. So I'm going to just show you one that I especially love. I'm going to be using these again in a second, so I'm not putting those too far away. Okay, so here it is. So I've shown this before um, when I demonstrated the Two Wild Rose stamp set back in April at the on stage event. I showed how to make your own ink pad. So. That is what I'm going to do right here, but with the fern. So what I've done is I can either take a piece of felt if I want to use it again and again over time, which I have done, and then I can put it in a little plastic um, stamp case and, and re-ink it later, or I can use um, uh, baby wipes. So I'm going to use baby wipes in this case. Um, it's a little bit dry, so I'm going to go ahead and wet it with a little bit of water. You can see I've, I've got something already on there, but um, I'm just going to show you one step first. So what I'm going to do with this first, because I'm making my own ink pad and I want it to fit for this stamp, um, is I'm going to ink this, ink the, the fern up with my Granny Apple Green, just to kind of show me where I want my ink to be. And then I'm going to come in with my re-inkers, and I'm going to add ink all over the surface. Now, I actually did it <clears throat> early this afternoon because I was messing around trying it. What a mess that turned out. It like all spread out. So let's do it. Let's do it again on the top because that's just going to be confusing and crazy. Okay, so Granny Apple Green. I want this to be the predominant color. And if you, it's best to use more of your light color over your dark color because the dark colors tend to sort of overtake the whole thing. Now, when I was doing it earlier today, I tried it with the same combination, Granny Apple Green and Bermuda Bay. I'm gonna show you what I got because it was okay, but I didn't love it. And so I decided to do something different. So this is what I got with my Make My Own Ink Pad with the Granny Apple Green and Bermuda Bay. So now, like seriously, how different is that? <laughs> it's a totally different look. 
Like, where does that dark green come in? I don't know. There's something about the pigment sprinkles that's so different. Same colors, just a different media, pigment sprinkles versus um, reinkers. So I decided that instead of using um, uh, the Bermuda Bay, I would put in some shaded spruce because I really liked the contrast between the granny apple green and the shaded spruce. So this is a really dark green, so I have to be careful not to use too much of it. And I can't even tell where exactly my fern is anymore, but it's kind of generally that blob in here. So let's see how this does. Sometimes you have to keep adding ink again and again to see, to make sure that it's juicy enough for uh, actually stamping. But I'm, I'm really just showing you this as a dem demonstration purpose. It'll look pretty, you can already tell. Okay, so now I have some good contrast there. You can see that on the stamp. Um, so here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, ah. It might need a little bit more ink, but it's still pretty. I think it's very pretty. So it's got more of that sort of bluish. It's still not the same, you know, it's still not really even very close to that. But you do get more of a the lacy image of that fern. And this, of course, because it's watery, gets a little bit more blurry. But just an alternative in case you really don't, you know, you're not a fan of the pigment sprinkles, you got another choice. So there you go. So that is the next thing. Now, let's move on to my background piece for my second card. This is all gonna come together eventually, I promise. Alrighty. So, now this is my background for my Creative Bliss card, <laughs> I just say. And what I'm gonna start with is watercolor paper, of course. Water, I'm just gonna spray the whole surface. You can see the pigment sprinkles, they just tend to show up somewhere <laughs> when you're working with them. You can see a couple of little specks of something in there. And what I'm gonna start with actually is a quick little watercolor wash of my Granny Apple Green. I wanna cover the whole surface with this, with a single color, just to make sure I have a, a background. And I had a lot of water on there, the pigment sprinkles react with water. So I want to be nice and wet. And then every single one of these turns out so um, differently. So we, we did this in my uh, team uh, meeting on Tuesday and I took pictures of everybody's projects because every single one, it was completely and totally different. <laughs> it was so much fun. So here we go. I'm going to spray with a little bit more water just because I want to make sure that my uh, Bermuda Bay has something to react with. So check that out. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh, it's so fun. I was making one, um, <laughs> and uh, my my friend Cindy, whose birthday it was um, Tuesday night, she was she's on my team. She was there. Great friend. I made something like this, and she's like, "I want it. That's my birthday present. Give it to me." <laughs> It was so cute, and so of course I did, and uh, and then I did another one for my project to show the rest of it. So you can spray or not. The more you spray, the more blended it gets. Now, uh, bear in mind that this a lot of this is going to get covered up. So if I um, spray it some more, it's going to just get more blended on the edges. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of how it's looking. I think I need to add a little bit more Granny Apple Green. It's so fun to watch it react with the water, at least for me. But when I, when I post the projects, these projects that I'm doing here um, tomorrow, I will also include the photographs of my team members' projects too, so you can just see how different it can turn out. It's just super fun to play with. So I'm gonna stop there. This obviously has to dry for some time. And, wow, look at my hands. How am I going to ever finish a card? <laughs> I'm going to get ink all over everything. Okay, I'm just going to set that aside. Fortunately, I have a baby wipe, even though it's, let's see, it's completely dry. Let's wet it up. There's no way I'm touching other stuff now. <laughs> I'm going to be a mess. Make everything a mess. Okay, let's 
get cleaned up a little bit. I feel like a child. <laughs> Alrighty. That's a good thing, right? We get to just be like kids. Okay, hopefully I'm not going to get... Let's see. Handprint? Nope. Good. The handprint test. I will show you the, the pieces that I worked on when they're a little bit more dry in just a second. Okay, so let me clean up this space just a tiny bit so I make sure that I'm not going to get ink on my projects I'm going to finish here. Let's set these guys aside. Let's go like that. Alrighty, so this piece here is what is the, the card number one. And so I just have a couple of pieces that I added to it. Uh, so I stamped my happy birthday. I'm using the perennial birthday stamp set. This is my new all-time favorite happy birthday sentiment. I love that one too, but I just love how big and bold that one is. So I've stamped it on a piece of shimmery white cardstock. I don't know if you can tell that it's shimmery white. It's a slight off-white, but it has a shimmer to it. It's really pretty. So I stamped it. Um, shimmer white is, uh, is it's stamped on shimmer white, and then there's also a piece of shimmer white here. Um, and I've just attached it to a piece of uh, shaded spruce. And then I'm just attaching it on, onto that layer. So I've got a bunch of different layers. Looking at my fingers and the white, and I'm just <laughs> making me nervous, man. Okay, so... And then I have dimensionals on the back side of this piece. This is just a plasticized piece that adhesive was once on, so the adhesive doesn't stick to it. And then you don't have to watch me removing dimensional backings. <laughs> so these all are dimensionals. Now I put these dimensionals on after the vellum was attached to this uh, shimmery white cardstock, just so that they are hidden in behind the white, because you will see through the vellum. Alrighty, and then, actually let's see what to do next. So then I got a card body. It's a whisper white card body with a piece of shaded spruce on the front and it goes all the way side to side and just a little white edge at the top and the bottom. Now let's see if this is actually dry enough to put together. I'm afraid. I think it might be actually. So we're just going to do it. So this is a pretty simple card, especially if you're doing the pigment sprinkles and you just do all that inking. You make all your little focal pieces, your little fern pieces. Um, do this with the same time. Now the only shame of this is that I'm going to cover up the center. <laughs> but I think it'll still be good. Now this one turned out so different from the first one. Uh, it's much more bold, and here is the actual original one that I created. So, totally different look, right? <laughs> the way those fern turned out, there was much more of the granny apple green in there. Uh, I got a lot more of the Bermuda Bay that looks red. <laughs> so strange, right? So that's my card number one. Set those guys up the top. And then the second card is a little bit more involved. Just gotta find my pieces. So now I did the background, this one at the just a minute ago, and look how different that is now. Everything kind of shifted and moved around, so that's gonna happen also, right? Let's still set that aside. But if you if you don't really like doing going that route um, with the pigment sprinkles again. You can just do a simple watercolor wash, um, not even with the pigment sprinkles, but with any color you want. So if I want to do it with granny apple green or the um, shaded spruce, let's see, do I want to do that? Maybe I'll try the shaded spruce. So all I really need is something plastic to put my ink droplet on. And I'm going to cover my whole piece of paper Spray it to give me a head start. So you're an anti-pigment sprinkle person. This is your deal. This is what you want to do. Just do a quick little watercolor wash. So let's see what we got here. So you want your whole paper to be wet. If it's not, what's going to happen is that your ink will 
gets stuck on the paper. So you can be as cover as much of this as you want just to get some texture in there. Now you are going to see only the edges, but I feel inclined to do the whole thing. Simple texture, textural background if you don't want to do the pigment sprinkles. So that's going to dry and look probably different. Now here's another fun little thing. My, my aqua painter, I can actually do a little droplet of water and that's going to add some texture to it. Now this is really just fun to show you because the truth is it's not going to show. Well, maybe towards the edge. Anyway, kind of cool. All right, now are my fingers dirty again? <laughs> oh, the joy. I'm going to set that one aside. And let's get to my actual Creative Bliss project. Now, I actually have my final one in a plastic sleeve because I was afraid to actually keep it out. Okay, so here's some parts and pieces that are going to go on this card. I'm going to show you how to put this together. All right, so this is the background that I created, um, just like the one I, I showed you earlier with the pigment sprinkles. So different, right? And then I've got a couple of fern pieces that I did earlier and show you a few others that I already die cut. So I wanted to have a bunch available for me to pick from so I would know what would go best with my background. So I got some other ones that I did. These ones are a little bit darker, but just, yeah, lots of fun to be had with these little elements. So now my layering is going to be vellum. Actually, I take that back. It's going to be white and my vellum. And then I got, I'm going to use two of my ferns. I'll use those two. And I need some glue dots because I'm going to attach these pieces together. And the order in which you attach these is kind of important. So I put one back in there. And I'm tucking the one stem into the bottom one so they're sort of at an angle like that and then looking for my tools I'm going to take another glue dot and stick it between the layers here and then I've got these lovely little gold elements. I think that's my one of my favorite little pieces in this die set. And uh, let's see. I'm going to tuck them in strategically into little spots in the f among the fern. Okay, so got one. Try to remember where I'm putting it in there. Okay, this is where your, this baby, the take your pick tool comes in handy. You can't get the little tiny piece of paper off the, <laughs> off the table. There's my glue dot. So I'm tucking it in right there, pressing it against the glue dot that I just put in behind. And then I'm going to do another one. Put the glue dot back in there. Oh, I picked that one up okay. And then I got one more that's going to go down towards the bottom. Let's see how that one goes. Ah, huh, got that one too. Pretty easy. Just tucking it in. So there's the start of my embellishment. And then I'm going to attach the bottom portion with 
um, uh, excuse me, with glue dots, <laughs> and the top with uh, dimensionals. Okay, so we've got a few spots down at the bottom. And then I'm going to take some dimensionals and put them towards the top. Actually, I want that one to be covered. That one too. Get a few little itty bitty ones so it's not sticking out. And so there's my adhesive coverage on the back. Glue dots towards the bottom and the dimensionals towards the top. And then this is just going to get placed on here. I need a little bit of room on the top for something else that's going up at the top. And let's see. Just about there. Oh, one of them fell off. Oh no. <laughs> Quick, get that baby back on there. Where did my, there they are, glue dots. I'm actually going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to put a glue dot on the front side of my gold element. And just going to tuck it in there. Of course, now it's attached, so I kind of have to do that, right? Ugh. Dang. Let's see if I can get it in there. Shoot. <laughs> well, geez. I thought it was all happy and tucked in there. And it's not. Hold on. I'm going to have to just pull this away ever so carefully. There was a glue dot back there. Yes, there is. Bending up my, my fern. It's going to look all natural, tattered and worn. All right, there we go. Now I'm doing better. OK, now, because my fern is attached to the vellum, and I did that on purpose that way. Of course, I didn't, I didn't take off the backings of my dimensionals. I do that too much in advance, so I forgot that I had to. This is why I have dimensional backings all over my house. Take them off and throw them. <laughs> OK, so there we go. Now I did this in this step on purpose. So I want my fern onto my vellum before I do the next step. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do is take some adhesive and put it only where the fern is, because otherwise I will see the adhesive through the vellum, just like with the last card. So I'm only going to attach it underneath where the fern is to this white piece. Now, I know I'm covering up a bunch of that background by doing this, but when I, when I added this white piece when I was originally creating the design, it just made it because it set it off and helped me to really just show off that beautiful, those beautiful fern shapes. So there it is attached to the vellum. We're almost done here. Now one of the other elements in the die set is this adorable little uh, butterfly. Now I wanted to keep all the little parts and pieces inside of the shapes. Now that was not without its challenge to do, <laughs> but I did it. And uh, here is one, one that's on the back side. So this one actually stayed in the gold foil paper and that made it really easy to turn it over and put some little mini dimensionals in there. So this is how I did it. Where did it go? Okay, good. So here's my little mini dimensionals. I actually cut them in half and used my paper piercing tool or you could use your take your pick tool because it has a little end piece like this as well. And I placed it so that it straddled the pieces, the little piece that's, that would otherwise come out. So you see there's those pieces come out. So I'm straddling that, those two parts so that it keeps it together. So that when I take it out of here, it's not going to fall apart. Isn't that nice? And then I can take the backings off 
And actually, these already have the backings off, so I'm going to just take that one off of there and place it up there in the upper left-hand corner, wherever it looks right to me. I can take my paper piercing tool and see that and squish it in in the center to kind of make those um, wings come up a little bit. Or I could have put a dimensional in the middle so that it, uh, so that it was tacked down lower in the center. But I didn't do that. That's okay. Okay, almost there. There's one other little step to this. Um, you guys like where this is going? It's actually pretty much almost done. I can't wait to show you the other version and the other ones my team made on my website tomorrow. So I used a little bit of this gold uh, metallic edge ribbon and I just tied a little knot, snipped it off so that it was itty bitty. I really wanted it to be kind of tiny. And I think on my original, I did it even smaller than that. Let's see. And then I'm just going to attach it with a glue dot. Where is she going to attach it? What do you think? <laughs> okay. Well, fun and games. So I squished up my glue dot as I was taking it off so that it would make sure it's not showing. And that's just going to go down there right at the bottom adding a little accent of the gold at the bottom to go with the butterfly and the little elements at the top. And of course I have to attach this, but I am gonna show you one other quick thing before I attach it. And I can attach it off camera too, right? So, uh, this one is a little bit wet still. I wanted to show you some of the focal pieces that we created that are still wet. So there's that one. That was the one that was just the quick watercolor wash with the uh, Notice I'm dabbing it. It's going to take off some of the color, but that looks like a plume of smoke. Isn't that cool? I think that's really cool. So this is just the watercoloring with the shaded spruce. And that, of course, could go down here if I wanted to. And that would also potentially go. It doesn't quite mesh with those colors quite as well, but it's still really pretty. And then the other one that we did with the pigment sprinkles... Check that out. That's changed so much, right? Okay, so do I dare put this down? I think it's pretty dry. So that would be another variation. So that looks so different from the first one. And then I, there was one other variation I thought would be fun that also would be, honestly, the absolute simplest if you don't want to do any of this inky stuff. But who doesn't want to do any of this inky stuff? I don't know. <laughs> Just do a piece of granny apple green, straight up granny apple green, and just put that on there. And with that gorgeous focal piece, like how can you go wrong? That's clean and beautiful. And you know what? I have to do complex and then I go to simple. And you know, simple is sometimes really, really nice. I actually really like that. <laughs> but I like all of them. So uh, I'm just a happy camper. So I hope you guys have enjoyed all these fun, this fun inky mess. I will again have all these on my website tomorrow. Take photographs of them. You can see all the different options and all of my fun fern pieces. I just love them all. So now I have uh, all this. You would like I, I like to call it card salad little pieces and parts to make cards with, little sumptuous nuggets <laughs> uh, to play with. Isn't it fun? Alrighty, I'm just gonna turn the camera around so I can say a goodbye and anything else, and we'll be done. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm all hot. Oh, I'm working hard. <laughs> I look flushed? I think I am. Well, anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that was a bit of a, or maybe a few little creative bliss moments, or you will go and do your own playing and uh, have your own fun, creating some fun things with pigment sprinkles or just watercolor washes or even just regular old cardstock like that last one, um, and have a blast. So uh, 
what else? I guess I'm back, same time, same channel, next Thursday, 7 p.m. I uh, don't know what the date is, didn't look it up. Maybe it's the third. No, the third is next Tuesday. The third is when the new celebration items go live. Yay! <laughs> so much fun. So I'll soon be showing some of the new celebration items. I have the two papers that are new, so very excited to share those. I've actually created a project with, um, with some of it, so uh, excited to share that. And let's see. That's all I can think of. So... We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining in and um, share your comments, your thoughts, your project samples, the things you create. Please share on my Facebook page. I would love to see what you create um, and hope to see you next week. Have a great evening. Bye, everybody. <laughs>